Welcome everybody to Congregation Lador Vador's Touch of Torah and Music. Tonight, featuring our cantor from Congregation Lador Vador, cantor Carol Garrett. She's great stepping in for Rabbi Barry because he's got his son at school and he's getting some honors for his senior high school graduation. So thank you for being with us, Carol. Thank you for being with us, congregation. And we're gonna get started with a song. And tonight, the Torah Parsha is the beginning of Numbers, the fourth book of the Bible. And the very first Parsha is called Bamidbar, in the wilderness. So take it away, Carol. So, so the song that I chose is actually one I've written. It's called Kol Yisrael. And it's, if you say Kol Yisrael, Aravim Zebaze, it means we are responsible for each other. The Jewish people are responsible for each other. And I thought that was really practical for tonight because it talks about us counting on each other and counting each other. And so, um, so that's, so this is the song. Israel We are the people called Israel, sharing our lives and our stories. Let's stand together, each and all. For this we have been called Okay, well, thank you so much, Carol, for that. And thank you all for being with us tonight. And Carol has her own Parsha for this Bimini Bar, and she's going to share that with us. So, Bimidbar in numbers, well, all the way through numbers, it, we're 38 years in the wilderness at this point, right? And and God has, Adonai has said, it's time to count the people again, right? So they count 600,000 armed, able to bear armed men, right? 600,000, which means they didn't count any of the women. They didn't count a bunch of other people, but they count 600,000 men to bear arms. And Rabbi, and God says to Moses, listen, here are the people that I want you to pick out of all of those people that can do the counting with you. So these are the people they're going to count with you, pick all these people. And he names all of them. God does. Moses, you know, doesn't able to write them down. I guess they didn't write at that time, but you know, he picks 12 people from the tribes to come find all those other people that are then going to help to count all of these men. So 38 years in the desert, do you think it took two years to like um, count them before they got to go into the promised land? I'm not sure, but um, you know, what were they doing after that? They counted them all. I mean, you know, as we go through numbers, of course, you, you'll see like what else happens. But um, so in my Torah portion, the message of the book Bamidbar makes us aware of the glaring gap between the divine and the human and reminds us that our ability to create order is only partial. We can hold a vision, but we cannot hold to it. We get distracted, we become mired in small details and pressing problems, and our progress toward that ideal seems insurmountable. As many of you become aware, especially during this time of COVID, we don't even have the absolute control over our own bodies. And the best of our plans are often rendered insignificant by forces beyond our control. The wilderness we find ourselves in wants us to find control over our lives, establish order, and create the future we envision for ourselves. Yet, by the end of Bimidbar, something significant has occurred. The Israelites have become a community. There have been battles, they have traveled far and for many years, and are ready to enter the promised land. Of course, 
all of this surmises that these stories are actually a historical account of this time period. The Jews did the best they could to explain their surroundings. As we have evolved and gained more knowledge, we have learned from their experience and stories and have made them our own. When our lives have seemed without form or direction, we have turned to a miraculous explanation and power to help us through. When we find ourselves back where we started, we realize that we're not really the same as we were before. We may feel as if we have been spinning our wheels, but we have changed as a result of even that movement. Bamidbar is ultimately a Jewish book affirming, even in the midst of chaos and disorientation, the possibility of progress and the triumph of ideals. More than once in the Torah, God issued an order to count the men. The first order came in the second year after the Exodus, when the recently freed Jews attempted to consolidate into a community as they began to wander in the wilderness. The second counting order occurs 38 years later, as the newest Jew generations of Jews prepare to enter the Promised Land. Each census is thoroughgoing and record recorded with account-like precision. 46 verses of the opening chapter of Parshat Bamidbar detail the process and the results of the tally. Once the divine commandment was to take a census of the whole Israelite community, interpreted as the men able to bear arms, census takers are appointed and the numbers start rolling in for each of the tribes. Quite quickly, we see the perils of organized religion. The counting is exclusive of women, youth, those unable to bear arms, and so we see that all are not counted. Does that mean that they don't count? We might see this as archaic if it were not for the experience of so many who continue to be left out. You are being asked whether women count or Jews of color and Jews by choice, who are sometimes treated as if they're not Jewish, or LGBT Jews who live, whose lives and loves have been insulted and ignored, or the very old and the very young whose voices often to go unheard, or those who feel kept out by money, namely the lack thereof. And do the Jewish people of different abilities who are assumed to have none, do they count? Religion has brought us together on so many levels, giving us a sense of belonging, order, and morals. But religion has also had its flaws in leaving people uncounted and unheard. The opening of numbers calls upon us to be part of something bigger than ourselves. It introduces us to the tensions that permeate the Torah between individual and community, God and humanity, journey and destination, kindness and terror. Most of all, it was a book our ancestors wrote to make sense of the world that they were living in, to bring order to their surroundings, to create a democracy that could stain and live by, and one that asked each Jew to stand up and be counted. Can the world count on you? to stand up for the downtrodden, the overlooked, the weak, or the unfortunate. There are many causes that could use your support, children, abortion issues, helping animals, the plight of women in some countries, the plight of our environment, the plight of women in this country, perhaps, and the plight of our planet. Here I am telling you about the plight of some organized religions having stood to keep people separated to berate or destroy those that are not like them, because man, as the master, is fallible. We must look at the divinity within each of us and how we are the same, rather than what divides us or makes us different. We must make a choice to stand up and be counted for something significant, in this case, to bring others in, to recognize our differences, and to build each other up. This portion speaks of being counted on and asks you to stand up and be counted, and so do I. Please consider spending some part of your week doing something for another person, someone in need, or for animals, or for the planet at large, or choose your own mitzvah project if you wish, and commit to doing something. The world is counting on you. Thank you. So light.